Just another brother with another humble question. Just another brother with another humble question. Uh. Welcome to A Brother With Questions. I am your host, B. Period. Man, I appreciate you for joining me today. Man, we're going to dive in, man. Everybody's talking about Candace Owens. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay some thoughts. I was already going to be talking about Candace in a Breakfast Club interview. And so uh, I'm gonna, we're going to watch a couple clips from the Breakfast Club interview. And then just give me some general thoughts about what I think about Candace and her now uh, departure from the daily wire so let's talk about it let's talk about it we're gonna dive in to this first clip uh before i forget please like subscribe to the channel we appreciate that but let's dive in let's go here we go you know i feel like i have just a very regular story like i said like i was born in new york raised in stanford there was nothing you know particularly that stood out in my childhood that made me think that i was going to go into politics i feel like i landed into politics kind of accidentally mm -hmm. and i say accidentally because it, i was I thought I was a liberal my whole life, you know, I thought I was on the left my whole life and really didn't pay attention to politics in any meaningful way. And then, you know, when Trump was running for office, I didn't want him to be elected. <laughs> I was like this, not because I thought he was a racist or a sexist, but just because I thought it was crazy to go from Obama, who had a certain decorum about him, mm -hmm. to suddenly this sort of brash New Yorker. Mm -hmm. But I thought it was weird when all of a sudden the people that love So right there. That, that's one of the reasons why, you know, whether you agree, disagree, you like her, you don't like her. Um, I think what you, you have to be honest about is her honesty, right? So uh, you don't have to agree with her or what she said about Trump. Uh, but, but you have to at least appreciate the fact that she's giving you her honest opinion. She's telling you exactly what she feels. Let's keep going. Like Trump. You know, everyone thought he was like this iconic symbol, symbol of business. He was in rap songs. Every, you know, Trump was the status flipped on him in one second. I just didn't I didn't buy the narrative mm -hmm. that he was in the media for three, four decades. And suddenly you wanted me to believe overnight that he was like Adolf Hitler and a racist. Mm -hmm. So I just didn't trust the media's narrative about him. And so I decided to actually listen to what he said. There it is. It's that honesty, man. It's the, it's the honesty. Because. That's, you know, I've talked about this before when it came to Trump, the Trump derangement syndrome, as some people call it. It was crazy. It was crazy. You know, I mean, all of the people, Al Sharpton, Jesse Jackson, right? For 30 years, they went to dinners, they took pictures, they smiled and loved them. And, and within, he ran for president and it was like, how are you guys going to put this racist up? Like, wait a minute. Why were you taking pictures with the racists? <laughs> it was so confusing. I'm with her on that one, man. I said the same thing about that thing, man. I was like, come on, man. So it's it's the honesty. It's the honesty. I'm, I'm gonna jump ahead. I'm gonna play one more clip, and then um, and then we're gonna get into some of my other things. Goes and now they're kind of doing that writ large and. I just, I hate feminism so much. I can't even tell you because what it's about is it's just an attack on men. Well, that's, you, you just said a lot, Candace. Let's, let's talk about some <laughs> of these now, you, you said a lot. Now, now with the, uh, the politicians, right? With, whether it's Lyndon B. Johnson, Trump, Biden, I think people are able to ignore a lot of their BS as long as they can get something done. Yeah. That, that, that's what it seems like. So that's why I don't even like to talk about the person. I like to talk about the policy. So what is the difference between tradition? You know, real quick. Shut up. I'm going to have to give Breakfast Club some credit on this because they typically, when you bring a guest like a Candace Owens, who generally speaking, they would probably argue that they very, you know, they disagree with a lot of her ideas. But to their credit, man, they really let her speak without interrupting. They let her speak, get all her full thoughts out. And then they would comment and ask questions, which is such a transition from you know, when Larry Elder came on, when Vivek came on, like it's such a transition from that. So shout out to the Breakfast Club. I, I, either they're changing their minds, which I doubt, <laughs> or they're just being more, they're just being, uh, they're just allowing the guests for whatever reason to talk now, which I appreciate. I appreciate that. Traditional conservatives in MAGA. Well, I would say the, 
uh, between the traditional conservatives and MAGA. Yeah, like the, before, before what what the, what the conservative mm -hmm. party was before MAGA and what it is now. Yeah, so I think what you're describing is that there was this there was this fracture in the conservative movement uh, because people realized that when he was referring to the swamp, what he meant was it didn't actually matter if you were on the left or the right. They were all working together in D.C. and selling out all of America. I mean, there is no reason why you go to D.C. and become a multimillionaire. You're supposed to be there to serve the American people. You're you're there taking our tax dollars. Telling you, honest, <laughs> like, like you don't see your typical right winger, conservative, whatever you want to call it. You don't see them having these honest conversations, and not about you know slamming a Democrat. You know, we're, we're, it's not a Democrat Republican problem. It's a Washington D.C. problem. They all have the same goal. Whether you're a speaker of house and you're Republican or you're speaker of house and you're Democratic, you have a responsibility to generate hundreds of millions of dollars on behalf of your party every year. And you're not doing that by, by increasing taxes. You know what I'm saying? This money is coming from outside sources. So that your party has hundreds of millions of dollars every year in fundraising. That's a part of your responsibility. You don't do that by not making some friends. In order to raise that kind of money, you got to make friends. And you have to, and, and most people who can give you money, they want a promise. Democrat or Republican, it's the same problem. Dollars. So what was happening was these lobbying interests, like, you know, Big Pharma goes down and they lobby and they'll offer money to a candidate to go push a drug like the COVID vaccine or they'll lobby for war. It's like, you know, biggest lobby, of course, military and industrial complex. So we're all suffering. You're going to work because these lobbyists are getting their incentives done by buying out these politicians. And so Trump kind of hit the scene as somebody who wasn't bought and paid for because he didn't need their money. He wasn't like a random congressman going to D.C. with no money. And he just started talking about the swamp. Like, it's not even Republican or Democrat. And I want people to wake up to that because I'm not here, like, ride or die for Republicans. They all sell us out. Like, the stuff that they did during COVID is criminal. It's just, it's criminal. That's, that's where I want to stop. If you go back, you watch this interview, Candace said a lot. Um, you, you could do three hours just breaking down this video. But I'm not doing three hours. <laughs> I'm not doing that with y'all. Uh, so let me share some thoughts. So one of the things that I see, and I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing. One of the things that I see about this video and then Candace, um, Candace was being Candace in this video of being the candid person that if you watch her, um, if you watch any of her YouTube content, this is what she does on a daily basis. Now, the topics, you know, they obviously they range, but but this is who she is on a daily basis on her YouTube content. And so one of the things that I found really interesting, right? So she's been doing a lot of uh she's on the Breakfast Club recently. She did Joe Budden recently. Um, I think there's another platform too that she did um that some clips are floating around. And so when when the news came down that the separation, you know, some people are calling the firing, uh, some people are calling the separation. Um, I, I love one comment I heard somebody say. They said, "Well, what y'all got to remember is Candace had a contract with Daily Wire, and so you know, Daily Wire can't just fire Candace because um, let's be honest, she hasn't done anything that ultimately isn't." true to who Candace is, right? I mean, okay. She said some things that probably some people didn't like, uh, particularly, uh, you know, a lot of people say the founder, one of the founders of Daily Wire, they, she said some things that he probably didn't like, but it's, it's one of those things where you pay for a personality to come on and be honest on a platform. And a conflict came up, right? A news story came up. She gave her honest opinion about the news story and, you know, apparently you didn't like it, but at the end of the day, that's what you pay for. And so, um, I, you know, I don't know what her contract states, but 
but the comment that they made was there's more than likely a, a mutual separation here because again there was a contract in place so you know what, what i found really odd though is the the celebration going on on different platforms in the black community i'm like what are we like what, what's what's the win here <laughs> like it, it's almost like she's she's quote unquote out of the daily wire and so people are expecting her to go away because she's no longer being funded by i don't know the man <laughs> whatever you want to call it she's no longer being funded funded by conservatives i guess is what people are thinking but but i'm, I'm like what are y'all talking about candace owens like her or dislike her candace owens has, has really built herself into a force i think I mean, you look at her YouTube platform, she's got over 3 million subscribers, or at least very close to 3 million subscribers. You're telling me that Candace Owens can't take the brand of Candace Owens? Because I'm sure she owns her name. So she can't take the brand of Candace Owens, pop up on a brand new Candace Owens YouTube page, and, and get a half, half of those subscribers to join immediately? or or build it back up to a million and a half subscribers and and i don't know what her paycheck was at at the daily wire but you're telling me she can't you know generate a a, a great income from that like what are y'all talking about I, I i don't see it and and candace owens i know in the black community is a very controversial figure because she doesn't stick to the narrative and she gives her honest opinion about the black community Imagine that somebody giving an honest opinion about the black community and, and she takes the route of not necessarily uh, takes the route of criticizing not the system, but the community and, and the things that the community can do to improve that have nothing to do with the system. Again, what is the problem? You know, I, I, the my, people like myself, Officer Tatum. Glenn Lowry, others. I mean, they're all doing the same thing because there's one thing I think that we all realize. And, and even, even the critics of a Candace Owens and an Officer Tatum, they realize it too. At the end of the day, the black community will change when the black community changes. And, and if, if Candace Owens has a fault if a Larry Elder has a fault, to me, their fault is they won't bow down to the idea that the system has to change in order for the black community to change. Because in my opinion and in their opinion, it doesn't matter what the system does until the community changes. The community is going to be the community. And so shout out to Candace. Uh, I think leaving that platform is probably going to be one of the greatest things she's ever done in her life because she is a force. She's a train that's been moving. Um, obviously she's been backed by them. Sure. But at this point it, it's, it's uh, sort of like, um, um, Oh, I can't think of her name right now that left Prager you. Um, oh, she's got the funny name, but, but anyway, she did the same thing. She left the platform and she's still thriving even without the machine behind her back. And so I think the same thing is going to happen to Candace. It's going to free her up, I think, to just truly give her honest opinion without worrying about what anybody else has to say. Not that I don't think she was doing that anyway, but certainly if she's on her own platform, she does what she wants, she says what she wants, when she wants, and she has nobody to answer to, or nobody to upset, except for the few clowns if you will <laughs> on the internet but hey man uh i think you know whether i agree or disagree with everything she says i think at least i think she approaches it from an honesty and a truth just like she did in the interview with the breakfast club just like she did with the interview with joe button and you can love it you can hate it but she's gonna be here and quite frankly i think she's